A virtual chit chat with Beijing. President Biden and President Xi will speak tonight to discuss the high tensions between the United States and China. Joining me now is KT McFarland, former Deputy National Security Advisor. KT, always a pleasure. What in the heck is the point of this? Nobody seems to know. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's making motion look like progress. Um, the Biden administration loves to have meetings. I mean, let's just get it right down to that. They don't necessarily want to accomplish anything at those meetings. They don't really care about accomplishing anything at those meetings. For me, though, frankly, Dagan, a lot of things could have gone wrong. And the fact that the White House is saying lower expectations, nothing is going to happen, terrific. Because my worry was that if they had, quote, deliverables, in other words, an agreement on something, it would be an agreement where we gave a lot of concessions and got nothing for it. So this is pretty harmless. It's kind of silly, I think, but it's pretty harmless. The two big items, anytime I get a readout, I think, that is this the third meeting that Biden has had this year or conversation yeah. with Xi? I, I do a keyword search on COVID and um, Uyghurs. Human rights abuses and COVID, and those are the two big things: COVID origins and human rights issues, and the you know the concentration camps filled with Uyghurs. Uh, do you, does if it doesn't come up, it's an embarrassment. Well, it's not only an embarrassment; it's a lost opportunity. You know, Ronald Reagan, who was one of the greatest negotiators in modern time, and to sit in the Oval Office, he never lost an opportunity to sit down with the Soviet Union or with other adversaries and make the case, he'd sort of have a checklist of all the things they were doing wrong and he wouldn't let them off the hook. You know, Joe Biden, I think he doesn't want to offend the Chinese. So chances are he won't mention the Uyghurs. He won't mention Hong Kong. He won't mention the fact that China has taken islands in the South China Sea and against all of their promises, turned them into military bases. He's probably not, for sure, not going to ask about the origins of COVID. You know, there are a whole lot of things that he should have on his on his ready list to immediately put the Chinese off on their back feet, but I don't think he's going to do it. The other thing is likely to happen, though the Chinese are likely to scold Biden for a whole lot of things. Or with, with made up. Our, our message is you have to play by the rules, yeah. and China makes up its own rules. It doesn't play by the ones that, that we exactly. play by. The, uh, exactly. And all, how about just asking them, why are you using uh, mock-up American ships for your war games? Yeah. Or why are you building a, a rapid buildup of your nuclear arsenal? Why are you trying to have war games against the United States ships? Why are you testing hypersonic weapons? Um, wh what's the purpose of those? Do you plan to start a whole new arms race, China? China, you know, and not, only, not even to get to the fact that the Chinese president in the last couple of months has made a lot of really provocative, mm -hmm. humiliating statements about Joe Biden. He's called him old. He says democracy is dysfunctional. You know, I, again, I don't know why we're having this. All it does yeah. is give the Chinese an equal footing to the United States, and they shouldn't be there. I want to get your reaction to John Kerry. John Kerry is kind of like the Franken czar when it comes to China because he's the climate czar, allegedly. And so, but that, that, those two go hand in hand because the more we can, yeah. like, it, we're going to take, we're, we're going to destroy our energy sector. We're going to give up our energy security, hand power to nations that hate us in the name of climate change. And China's going to stand back and, and laugh at us and, and, and use that again to gain more power. But John Kerry was pressed on China's human rights abuses. He said this. Life, uh, you know, <laughs> Life is always full of tough choices in, in, the, in the relationship between nations. That's not my lane here. That's uh, my job is to be the climate guy. So that was in September and then oh. recently. So he's trying to separate the two. They're inseparable. They're, they're, inter, they're interlocking. Yeah, of course. And if he's the climate guy, he's not being very successful at that either. Look, if this administration was really serious about climate, what would they do? They'd, they'd turn the energy industry back on in the United States. Because of fracking, because of natural gas and oil, the United States was not only energy independent, but we were exporting energy. And what it was doing was the free market was taking over, and countries and companies were switching from dirty coal to clean natural gas. That helps the environment. But instead, John Kerry and 
and his pals in the Biden administration, they've turned off the American energy industry. And as a result of that, what are the Chinese doing? The Chinese are building more coal plants. Where the Biden administration is begging the Iranians and particularly the Russians, pump more oil. So we're really, you know, we're not serious about climate control. We're not serious about any of this until we immediately make the United States energy competitive. And as you point out, all the Chinese really want us to do is to shut down our energy industry right. and therefore we really handicap our industry, period. Right. It, it weakens us in every way. And they're perfectly happy to sit back and laugh while we do it in the name of yeah. Greta Thunberg. Uh, KT McFarland, thank you so much. Great to see you.